Hello there! Have you ever found yourself scrolling through Blender Kit endlessly trying to find the perfect car paint for your project? Well, I've got you covered. I'm a car designer and I realized that I keep repeating the same car paint material every time I'm on a project. To save myself some time, I recently decided to turn it into a fully functional asset that I can use across all my projects. Today I'm going to introduce you to a fully customizable car paint shader for Blender. For those of you that want to copy the material without having to buy it on Gumroad, here it is. For the others, we're going to go through the PDF file that comes with the asset on Gumroad. So first is some examples. So this weekend I was in Chantilly for the Concours d'Elegance and I took some pictures of course just to be able to crash test the paint asset and try to replicate every car paint I saw there. So that's what I did here and this is all available so you can check the values here and replicate them for your own projects. And yeah, this is the last one. So quickly, we're going to go through how to use the material. So this is the default material. The first row is the main color. So this is basically like on a principled BSDF material. And the second one is a secondary color, which you can have uh, on certain types of paints, like this one, for example, is a really good example. So you can see from the front, it's blue from the exterior reflections it's purple this is called Fresnel I illustrated it here uh, so basically yeah you can in blender you can have a value that goes from the most parallel to your vision point so on surface to the most perpendicular one to your vision and that's the Fresnel basically and you can make it change the color of the paint next you have the metallic now I know some of you are, are like purists and know that on the principal VSDF, you're not supposed to put a uh, value in, in between zero and one. Uh, material is either metallic or dielectric, which means non-metallic. But I wanted to put glitter in that paint and that slider controls the less than or greater than whatever that makes it zero or one. So it's either metallic or dielectric. So it's actually physically accurate and more than the principal BSDF. So, okay, zero metallic makes it like a plastic thing like this and fully metallic makes it like this. And go back to the examples. Yes, a car is made of metal parts, but check this out. This paint here has zero metalness and I replicated it with zero metal. Like this is not metallic and Interestingly enough, to replicate this kind of paint, it's very little metallic, like it's not so metallic compared to paints like this one, which is looks super metallic. You have to play around with the values to find what metallic value fits for the car, for the project you want, like for the aspect you want, basically. This one is fully metallic, like yeah, one metallic here. Anyways. Back on the tutorial, non-metallic has shadows. Like, you know, there is two types of shadows. Proper shadow, I don't know how it's called in, in English, but and projected shadow is the one on the ground. And metallic objects have no proper shadow. This is all reflections, basically. As I was saying before, the metalness of the material is controlled with a glitter. And you can change the size of that glitter here. So don't put zero if you want to make the glitter disappear, just make it very little so it's not visible to the eye. Okay, roughness, I don't think I need to explain this. Zero makes it like chrome something and one makes it a very rough surface so you have more blurry reflections basically. And the glitter contrast is because glitter, let me open up the file here, glitter makes it, uh, is dictated by the metallic thing. But if you have a fully metallic material you don't you don't have the glitter anymore because it's only one so glitter contrast allows us to see the glitter still even though we have a fully metallic or fully non-metallic material the fans are going crazy here okay i usually put it to point one i've used this asset already like for three projects i'm only releasing it now because i wanted to really crash test it with the first few examples and I really wanted to make sure that it's usable for like every scenario you could see for it. So glitter contrast, usually I set it to 0.1. For those of you who either took a screenshot at the beginning or 
are going to go into edit mode on that uh, material, you will see uh, it's actually playing on the roughness. Anyways, the coat weight, I don't need explaining. It's like on the principal VSDF, either you have clear coat or not. Uh, you can uh, also, the value just below that is the clear coat roughness. I made it available here because you might want to touch on the clear coat roughness without having to go to edit mode to, to do it. That's why it's here. But yeah, here it's nothing like revolutionary. It's just the clear coat. And the last one is the bevel, uh, bevel node, which uh, you might know. It, it fakes the normals into thinking there is a bevel where there is not. So when you import CAD into Blender, this fucks it up. So you better do your fillets in CAD, basically. But when you model in Blender, like in Subdiv, etc., and there is no holes in your 3D, this is perfect. Like, for example, you model super lazy. You're, you have a very lazy model and you just have the bevel node and it bevels it. Bevel radius, keep it super low. Even here, it's very high. So included in the file is uh, the samples you've seen uh, up, up to here. Like it's, this is a typical uh, scenario in a car you might see a lot of times in car design. This is a sphere. Yeah, no shit. And this is, this was just to show the the bevel thing and also to have another example facing the other way so we have a better view of the material but the cool part is i'm also giving you this so this is included in the in the file if you go through the the gumroad link you will get this car which it's one of my projects actually you can see the full presentation of, on behance if you want uh, link is probably in the description below if I didn't forget. All right, that's all for me. Thank you very much for following the video to the end. I hope you enjoy the the, the the asset. You just take the sphere, you copy paste into whatever scene you have. I paste the sphere here and then I take my model, link materials, and there we go. I stole the paint and now we can play around with the paint asset. So you see the bevel node is really cool here because I never I never had this this bevel. It's a crease. Uh this is a work in progress project. Don't uh, don't judge it. It's uh it's very bad right now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy and uh yeah, subscribe, do whatever you want. I'm not really a YouTuber, so